This is the 155th episode of Cloud Focus Weekly for the third week of October 2013. This episode is titled Top 10 App Exchange Apps. Cloud Focus Week is sponsored by The Permissioner by Arcus. Mass assign and revoke Salesforce permission sets. It truly is permission sets made easy. Available for free on the App Exchange or go to thepermissioner.com. I am your glad, glad handed voice, Jason Atwood, and joining me co hosting today and for the last 155 times is Justin Elstein. Justin, how are you doing today? Well, that was long winded. I'm good. Thanks. Go to the permissioner.com, download a good app exchange app because you're going to be in the mood after this podcast, that's for sure. So, this was a fan request. Yeah, we love fan requests. So, this was actually Keep sending them in. We yeah, love it. Send them to We're a customer company. We listen. Podcast at arcasaint.com, whatever. Wherever. Or just send it to podcast or at something.com or tweet wherever. us whatever. Um, so this came about because after our top 10 streaming TV episodes, right. which everybody loved, yes. um, where we basically picked things and then made fun of each other for picking things. Did you um, see that story in the Wall Street Journal, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, about Netflix and the NFL? No. They're like, it's a rumor and the NFL is denying it, but Netflix is trying to get in the on Sunday ticket. No, on this like new Thursday night game thing that they might be doing. They're in some way, shape, or form trying to get in on the NFL and yeah. streaming NFL, Netflix. Well, I of mean, all people. Well, Google was the one that came up over the summer in August. Yeah. It was all over the news that Google and Netflix were meeting. Not sorry, Google and the NFL. And I was like, nothing better could happen other than Apple, which I love Apple. But even even or if Netflix. I'm Netflix, no. Why? Be, well, Netflix is pretty put, cross platform, but honestly. I'd rather have the power of Google or Apple behind something than Netflix, especially the NFL. If Netflix I'm the NFL, is I'm really good at streaming stuff. Yeah, they're good. They're not the best. I don't oh, know. Netflix to me is really well. We just more reliable than quite iTunes. A, quite a rat hole. Yeah, I think no. it's just as reliable. No way. Netflix craps out. I've had them go out for days at a time. I have not. Their ter- their support it was terrible. No, and they're not. They're, they don't have the architecture that whatever. Apple or Google Let's has. go. All right. Keep going. Sorry, I had to mention it because it you. was like NFL streaming sports stuff. So anyway, someone suggested we pick top five app exchange apps. Now let's be clear: we would pick our two apps, but we didn't. So we're not mentioning our apps, even though one of our apps is sponsored, gl- kindly sponsored this podcast. Thank you, the permissioner, for Thank sponsoring you. this podcast. Um, but we are going to talk about – so and, and unlike our other episode, our top 10 TV, because we were doing TV shows, we kept that secret from each other. And this one we know because I didn't want to pick the same thing. And it's only five each, so we could literally end up with the same five, and that would have been no fun. Right. So we have kind of pared ours down so there are five each differently. And because we don't have 10 apps installed in our org, our own org, although we do consult with lots and lots and lots of clients – some of these we are daily users and live live and dream and die by, and some of these are things we've used for a couple times and had great success with. So I just want to make that clear. And in no way is this an endorsement or anything. Safe Harbor, Safe Harbor, sorry, sign up, waiver, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I, I just feel like I don't want someone to come back because you told me and to nobody, use it. Nobody knew about this beforehand. Nobody paid oh, for yeah. any of this stuff. Wait, like, you nobody... didn't get that Ferrari? No. Oh, oh, sorry, dude. Weren't you supposed to maybe share a Ferrari if that's what you got? I got a Ferrari. So no one, no one knew about this. No one like sent us an email and said, "Hey, can you mention our app?" This is all unsolicited it's fun. Totally unsolicited. Again, based on usage and/or knowledge, right? And/or usage and knowledge. All right, right, let's go. We're gonna go five to one. Yeah, five being the least. Although, again, I don't think these are deadly ranked yeah. like our TV shows were They're ranked not. like death. Yes, they were. These these are more ranked like like so let's go from your five you you go or i go first you go first because we decided that my top was going to be the the so mine is actually from i haven't used this in a while okay um and but when i've used i've used it with a couple clients and they really enjoyed it so i haven't used it in a while i think it's had a couple releases since um but it's calendar anything by silverline uh so it's an app that really can take and when they say anything they mean anything with a date field really so if you want to take lead created and have a calendar a calendar looking view of when leads are created you could do that it's great obviously for campaigns 
and for opportunities to see when opportunities will land. You can give them colors. You can create these filters. It's a very rich and involved application. It is pay, and again, I don't know what their pay scheme is now. We're not going to get – I'm just going to tell you whether it's pay or not pay, and you can figure it out because it's like Salesforce. Like who knows what anybody actually pays for anything. Um, but it's a really neat app. It's one of those things that I think of of all of these things. A lot of these I think, ooh, I wonder if Salesforce just could build that. Like just make it so it's like built in. You could take anything and turn it into a calendar view, yep. day view, week view. Um the last time I played with it, it had drag and drop, where you could then drag an object, a record, sorry, and drag it somewhere else. And it would change the underlying dates of where it was sitting. And I thought that was cool. And it also showed multi-day. So if you have like a, a something, you know, a, something that goes over multiple days, you'll see it over multiple days. Great app. Uh, calendar anything by several line. My number five, let's go with yours. So mine's something that we here at Arcus use on a daily, if not hourly, if not... Well, on the half hour. It's hourly. Mine's on the half hour. I don't think you're allowed to go on the well, half hour. Well, mine's on the half hour. So <laughs> Yours goes to 11. Mine goes to 30 minutes, and yours apparently doesn't, but mine does. So it's a Perio Cloud Sync, which I use primarily to sync my Salesforce calendar with my Google calendar. I know you can sync more than just that. You can sync um, contacts as well. But I do not sync contacts. Um, I I just sync my calendar uh, with between Salesforce and Google, and that's because I think we've talked about this before. Uh, we use our Salesforce calendars as our primary uh, calendar. So to have it over in the Google Cal is nice because then you can subscribe to it in your desktop client and see it there and also have it visible you know in google calendar as well so imperial cloud sync um i guess also the other benefit is when you get a invite from somebody external from the company they're usually sending you know normal meeting invites not salesforce meeting invites and those end up into your salesforce calendar so it's bi-directional synchronization so i'm picking that imperial cloud sync um for google apps because we use it on a hourly basis it's just running right now awesome yeah i mean that's one of those apps that i like to not think about yeah the I more don't i don't about think it, about it that works. app the like more it. and it's worked for a long 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 time and yeah. that app's been around for forever yeah and we just set up some new people on it um it was so it still really, works really easy to set up so it's good and it's a it's a pay app isn't it it is pay okay there's a free 30-day trial though free it up um it has so- 60 reviews Four and a half stars out of those just, 60. That's just to show good. you how nice we are, our first two picks were from our competitors, like right. competitors in our space. So there you go. There, That's how nice we are. That is how nice um, we are. We are that nice. My next pick Not is – Not in real life though, only on the podcast. Yeah, only on the podcast. So in real life, we're cutthroat, cutthroat people. My next pick is something that I think you made a cloud focus app pick of the week for – but then I've recently used and used extensively for a client, and so I've kind of started to like it. And oh. uh, okay. so it's uh, do tell. I will. It's Roll Up Helper oh. by Passive Passage Technologies. So this is, um, I mean, technology wise, I, I know what's going in the background. But so you know, you can roll up stuff that are in a master detail relationship. But if they're not in a master detail relationship, like an account to a contact. You can't roll up the information. So I have a use case where they wanted to roll up and sort of build stuff on the account that has to do with a lot of the contacts that are connected. Can't do that without code. Um, Can't do that with clicks. But you can do that with Rollup Helper. And it's a neat little app. You can kind of define these rollups. You tell it what you're rolling up. You can give it filters. You can schedule it. And then you can say go up onto this field. And so I have it running once every three hours, there's a free version. So that's and it, the, it's like a freemium model, right? Yeah. Because this one runs every and three hours, but it could be real time if you wanted it to, right? I don't know if it could go real, real time because I think it's a batch job. So I think it can only go hourly. Mm, my guess is it can do like a future method and maybe, okay, maybe. go every four or five seconds. Maybe. I'm using the free version. It's pretty cool. It's a neat little app. been using it. It seems pretty rock solid. It's got a great interface. Um it just works, and it just does something that's that you can't do. That you kind of go, you know, people scratch their heads all the time. Like, well, why can't I roll that up? And it's like, well, because that's not the relationship of the data. Well, I want to roll it up. And you're like, well, I'm sorry. So this is a nice <laughs> way to do that. Um, again, there are. Do you use that voice when you do it? You don't need to do that. Okay. Um, 
it is again it is pay there's a freemium there's like roll up helper free and then roll up helper whatever they do not i will if i'm gonna give them a little ding ding them they do not give you a trial no so i but you have the free version as yeah the trial. but i needed the big version in order to try something and i asked them for it and they said no oh that's not very so kind. i said how about a 30-day trial how about like just get, i need to know if it will work basically because the free because what i wanted to do the free version actually ended up working but i wanted it to work differently so i'm like can you please just give me like a 30-day trial and we'll talk about these other ones like i know calendar anything will give you a great trial there's a free 30-day trial that's a very important just to see that it works and in that they literally wouldn't do it they they came back to me with legal documents and i said i'll sign them and they and they said oh or someone's working on the documents i'm like this should be easy this is salesforce you should be able to give me a 30-day expiring trial so anyway that's my little ding otherwise great app and it uh, has versions you know, again free and then um not so free all right go ahead what's yours so this is uh <laughs> two weeks in a row this is a repeat so i picked <laughs> it last week as my pick um, I'm picking the Jitterbit data loader for Salesforce. Okay. Cloud or on-premise, whatever version you want. The Jitterbit data loader for Salesforce is free and allows you to import, export Salesforce data um, to and from flat files. You can connect to databases. You can export to uh, FTP or SFTP sites. It's really nice. It's a it's data loader plus. You know, it can do some transformations, some minor ones uh, within the data mapping. And it's actually a really nice and I think very sort of up and coming now uh, version of a data loader tool. Uh, we talked about it a lot last week, so I won't go into too much depth on it. Uh, but, you know, we have used it for a number of clients and set up processes for them that you normally would not be able to do or do easily uh, with something like the data loader it's kind of like a etl light if you will nice so nice. jitterbit data loader for salesforce it's on the app exchange it has 473 reviews and four and a half stars which is pretty darn good so side notes i got to play with remember i mentioned thought maybe we were outside of an nda but it wasn't because it's actually live in the import in, wizard the import wizard yeah i was playing with it yesterday myself for a client i broke it within about four seconds did you really yeah and i was kind of disappointed like i'm glad it has a beta on it because i went i just went oh let me just try click 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 and it gave me this big bad error like will not nail point error and i'm like Ooh, Ooh okay and i went, i backed away and i went to the old one <laughs> <laughs> I was actually happy the old one was sitting there because I was like, if this thing was not the old one, I would be disappointed. So, but it, yeah, the old one's still there, and I went and used the old one. Yeah. Um, it's a newer interface. Does it have any new functionality, or is it just kind of like the drag and drop file? Is yeah, that it? Yeah, like, it's more it? like fancier. Looks a little nicer. Oh, it definitely looks nicer. Um, I think the mapping is actually a little nicer and easier to do because it shows there. you. Oh, you didn't get to that step. So the mapping instead of just having all the fields. And with drop downs, like which column are you mapping it to? It actually attacks it from the opposite direction and says, here's your columns. What fields do you want to map it to? Nice. Because it's kind of annoying to just have all these fields and with all the drop downs of the columns and right. go through all the fields. I think it's easier to look at it from the other angle yeah, and say, is. here's the columns. Right. Because I have these mapping. Because if I have two columns I'm, and I have 600 fields, yeah. don't give me that. Don't way. give me all 600 I fields. Go the other I way. just want to go the other way. Exactly. Right. So, and you can do, um, I, I don't, I've never really used the old one, but I was playing around with the new one yesterday. It was like, do you want to update data? Do you want to insert data? Yeah. Do you want to update and insert data? So it had that kind of functionality yeah. also. The old one and is the drag and drop the file old, thing, The old one is eye candy. The old one is one of those um, is one of those things that I think is like this hidden thing because it can do some neat stuff. It can I do use it stuff for that, accounts and contacts because it does that very nice. Got them if you just have one row with account and contact, and it can dedupe on the fly. Even even two rows. So like sometimes people have like even contact three. one contact and then contact three. two. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a neat little uh, app. Um, so hopefully the Maybe but the bug anyway, I hit the pick was, was Jitterbit. All Go right. Ahead. Um, my next pick is actually by a company you know well. Oh, you know what we should mention? No. While we're doing this? Sure. And I'll start with Jitterbit since that's where we started. We should start with, like, are these native apps? What kind of apps oh. are they? So Jitterbit's a data loader. It's actually a client that sits on your desktop, whether you have a Mac or a PC, and it just connects just like the data loader. 
as opposed to like a real force.com native application that's just running on the platform. Well, good good point to bring up because we're I'm about to pick something. There's so let's talk a little bit about the different you know aspects. There are things we call them 100% native. Anything that installs. 100% inside of Salesforce and doesn't use any external sources. So some apps and providers will say, oh, we're 100% native, but they'll use an engine behind it like Google or Amazon. Amazon. Or um, that's not really 100% native because you're using a third party. But like it, some things are just installed and are 100% native. And then the other thing to think about is managed versus unmanaged. And that really affects what how the updates happen and really – I mean, we put out both. We put out managed packages of our products, but it allows us to do great things like push uh, patches and releases into people's orgs. But if you're someone who's putting in your org, realize that they can do that. They can push stuff into your org. They can and push. You you can't see anything, right? You can't. You, you don't can't have control of the code. Have control of the code or right. change it. So a lot of people like unmanaged packages for like Force.com Labs projects because they're like template starter, right? projects and then they build on top of them and i would say then the downside of unmanaged is that sometimes they're They'll not break they're break and they're not kept up i mean salesforce i don't think any of us picked a salesforce lab project no um because we've had experiences where someone could install something that's a labs product but then not realize that there's test code issues and there's things that like you don't know that when you're installing it that basically a labs product i don't think has to go through the same the same thing that we don't know you shouldn't really say that i'm gonna say it why okay. not well, I don't think it has to go through the same say what you want to say that our products do. But anyway, um, so my next one is actually something put out by Salesforce, but not a labs project. It's this tiny little piece of the nonprofit nonprofit starter pack, which is a package of different products that you install. Um, but it's one that I've used for not nonprofits for for profits for profits for profits. Um, it's called Affiliations. Mm. Um, and it's love a, affiliation. Yeah, it's a neat little app, um, free as as free as it can be, um, yep. and changeable, editable. Um, so I've added on to it in different orgs when I put it in. But what it does is, I like to call it it's like your LinkedIn for Salesforce. It installs a little package and a, and a, some objects and triggers. And now when you move someone from one account to another account, it basically creates a little record that is their history from what they were. And it grabs their title and it puts their date of when they started, when you added them. And then if you move them, it says that they ended. And then it says that they're current versus past. Um, so it does this little like tracking. So if you have contacts, and people ask me all the time, what do you do with like contacts who leave companies? Do you put deactivate it or whatever? I say just move them to some place, move them to another account. We have one called the Deadpool, where you go if we don't know Very or, friendly. or don't care where you end. Um, but then this would track. It'd say, you know, worked at Salesforce from June 2010 to, to whatever. And then when you move them to Deadpool, it'd say now they work at the Deadpool and puts a little link to – so on the record and on the account record. So it's a, it's a nice little feature or a nice little um, package. Um, can be modified. Affiliations by Salesforce, free as a bird. Yeah, Nonprofit Starter Pack has a, no a lot of nice little – it is made up of a series of five to seven packages, and that's one of them. I really enjoy that one. Yep. All right, moving right along, I am picking a nice utility here for administrators and consultants who need to sometimes um, provide documentation on your org or schema of your org. There's a few of these out there. This one I've been using for a while, and it continues to just work. Uh, it's Ethereos Easy Describe by Ethereos. Um, it's a free tool, 100% native, um, no objects even. It's all code. Um, and it's a developer tool to view and extract the metadata of any object inside of your Salesforce org. So if you wanted to look at what makes up my account record you can go to a screen you say account you click go and it brings up everything about the account and then you can export it to excel so you can use it as documentation as you go along like it says oh here's this field it's this type here's this field it's this type here are all the record types of that here are the ids and everything that you would really need to see about an object um and all of its children relationships can all be viewed and extracted using Easy Describe 
by Ethereos. Again, free, um, native, and uh, it is managed. There you go. No objects, though, which is nice. I actually like that when you can keep your footprint very light. Yes. yes. No objects in the org. It just It's just code straight up. Kind of like the permissioner. Kind of like this episode brought to you by the permissioner. Right. Permissions, that's made easy. Who has no objects? Um, but we have a tab. Um, I, all right. I just uh, I'll pick the other one of those two apps that we use all the time that is very good. Um, I literally was just using it with a client the, the yesterday. Um, and it is Field Trip by I'm gonna say the name wrong, Quandor, Candor. I think it's Candor. Candor with a K, with a I Q. So. I don't like their tagline because they say the most popular admin tools on the App Exchange, and I say I don't know because the permissioner. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so Field Trip is so it's it's almost like a brother to Easy to Scrap. I'm surprised that one of them hasn't started to do what the other one does. Like one hasn't just said, well, we're gonna add that feature into ours. But Field Trip it. Um, actually does create objects to track this stuff, but you basically go to an object and you say, analyze this object. So let's say take the take the opportunities and say analyze it. And then it'll go through and runs batches and you can actually monitor the batches um, to see them happening. And it goes through and it looks at every field and every record inside of Salesforce and then tells you, and then writes to its own set of records, tells you what percentage of those fields are used and how they are populated. Um, this is absolutely critical for going into an old org. I'm in a 2004 org now helping them out. And it's like just you know, just to figure out, okay, I see you have 400 fields. <laughs> Let's figure out which one of those are used. And so this one's great. You run this report, and I can say, look, these 30 fields, there's zero values in any of them. Therefore, let's just delete them or get them off page later or whatever. Let's get them off now um, because they're not – no one's even populated them in 10 years or 9 years, so let's move them. And then here's ones that are sort of barely populated uh, or then here's ones that are you know fully populated. Those are great because then it kind of – you can look at it and go, well, are there things that should always be populated? Maybe they should be required. So field trip, um, great. It is free as well. Um, it is a managed package. It is native. It does um, – it does build two custom objects. So, by the way, on your on the app exchange, just so you know that we're not, you know, remembering this, there is when you go to the detail section of it, there is um, there is a whole set of details around what it does. It says the name of it, the package, the type, if it's native or not. Really, um, I was just doing this off the top of my head. Yeah, and then it says how many custom objects, how many custom tabs, and how many custom applications it adds. This one's interesting because it doesn't add a custom application. Oh, really? So, so sometimes you... It just has a tab? It's just a tab. So oh. you just go find it. That's um, kind of cool. So you should just read that because sometimes these things add a lot of stuff to your org. Yes. And you want to make sure that they're uh, not... Sometimes mostly. they come with quite a few objects just yes. to do stuff in the background. Yes, like Compliance Locker. Compliance Locker <laughs> comes with some objects. It's not that many. Not that many, yeah. but some. All right. Can All right. I, can I make that my number one pick? No, you can't. Um... All right, so I'm down to my number two, right? Because then we're... I feel like I'm... All right, maybe. Yeah, I'm down to my number two, which means Oh, wait, then I go have... my number one, then you're number one. That's okay. right. Yeah, I, that's I actually... Works. You went first this time for a change. So I'm picking uh, one for not-for-profits. Okay. You've already picked the affiliations uh, package. And this is not from Salesforce. This is from Cloud for Good. It's called Donation Split. We've used this for many a client who does fundraising and development. And this product is used to very, very elegantly um, split donations or gifts across multiple programs and multiple budget years. So oftentimes if you're a nonprofit who, um, oh, by the way, it's free also. It does this really great stuff and it's free. Um, but oftentimes if you get uh, restricted gifts or major gifts or grants, you know, you get these large dollar amounts in one donation, but you have to split it across multiple budget years. And within those budget years, you have to split it across many programs because it's restricted on how you have to spend it. Um, this product does it really, really well. Does it with a nice inline visual force page in the background. It's writing the data to, um, a couple of custom objects and then when you click on like the budget year or the program which are records it shows nice graphical like here's a percentage here's you know nice. that kind of stuff so it has some really cool 
uh, visualizations of the data and it allows you to split it up into the ways that are logical for non for profits um, and report on it in ways that are logical so donation split by cloud for good we've installed it many a time um, when working with nonprofit development teams that is a good one I'm going to take a little bit of a side path here you are and of course you are <laughs> of course because that's what I do it is what you do and I'm gonna name my top two <laughs> worst apps worst apps yeah I'm going neg I'm gonna start really? I'm just are gonna you, go neg. do you really want to do that yeah I do all I, right I have to throw it out there listen I'm keeping it real right so I'm throwing out two, and you might – well, one of them I don't think you have a ton of experience with. The other one you do, and you might disagree. I'm going to keep an open mind. But Go my ahead. two worst apps that I think uh, – and again, sorry to everybody who had anything to do with these, but I have uh, used them personally, and I have also used them with clients, and I think that they are – So what are they? Let's go. Well, first one is LinkedIn. The LinkedIn for Salesforce, the pay version of LinkedIn. Yeah. The package, the one that installs – it is just it is just no good. It's no good. It has so very and it's it is a basis of, of, of function versus cost. So there is a cost versus function. Its function is tiny, its cost is huge, its installation, its administration and everything are very difficult for what it does. And then the value is just tiny. It like gives you a little view of LinkedIn stuff. It it just it just it irritates me every time I see it. It irritates me every time I look at it. It irritates me every time I have to install it for somebody. Um, and uh, anyway, so it's LinkedIn. That's like my number one. And then my second one, and this is maybe semi fair, maybe not, is the Salesforce for Twitter and Facebook. I feel like was a conceptually something that was interesting, but like a lot of these things, they put it out as something that is a working example of something but it's not really a working example of anything. It's kind of a half working thing and isn't really, and then just kind of gets abandoned. Um, so that's sort of my, it's more of a pet peeve than hated. Like the LinkedIn one, I just, I can't stand it. Um, but the Salesforce for Twitter and Facebook, I don't know. You have experience with it? The Salesforce for Twitter and yeah. Facebook? Yeah, it was cool when it came out. It was like, oh wow, look what you can do. Um, but now it's like, you know, it's not that impressive and it was never it was never automated enough to really be very valuable right i mean bringing in all those tweets and then having to take an action on all of them was not super valuable i mean in some ways the thing i'm happy about salesforce for twitter and facebook is that wasn't it wasn't part of salesforce no, because i could totally have seen them have built this in and say it's now part of salesforce and then three years later realize oh wait this isn't the way we should go right they've changed direction right buddy media and radiant six and all that are sort of the direction to do it yeah, so this just, is more a radiant six thing than a buddy media thing so it was about listening yeah and, well and responding and creating and, leads and cases but not not no. about advertising. And again, I don't think it was, it's not a terrible, terrible product. But in, in that we installed it, and I can, there's still like it's one of those products that then litters your org yeah. with stuff. Never like, goes away. Like it's like uh, what's the what's the kudzu? Kudzu is that uh, is that weed that grows in the south or goes everywhere? It literally cannot be stopped. It's like it's it's a juggernaut. So anyway, it's like kudzu. It's just all of a sudden, I'm still finding it places in our org. It makes me upset. Um, if those who want a clean org. All right, so my number one, let's go back to something else. I'm going to unneg and go positive. Um, my number one is um, an app that I use infrequently, but when I do, I'm always super impressed by it. And the only reason I don't fully, fully use this all the time in my life is because I'm a mail, OSX mail user, not a Gmail user. Um, but it's Cirrus, uh, Cirrus Insights for, uh, or Cirrus Insight, um, the Gmail plugin. That allows you to uh, integrate uh, Salesforce data into uh, into Gmail, um, and it has gotten better and better. I mean, I keep getting the releases and everything, and I keep going, "Oh, I can't believe you did that!" Like they now do calendar contacts syncing with Salesforce. Um, I think, I mean, I think on their roadmap, um, you know, they're looking at doing tasks and all the stuff. I mean, they're really just going for it. I love it. They are, you know, they are a competitor to Perio. Yep. Because um, Perio does tasks and calendar now. Contacts. Sorry, contacts and calendar. Um, but these guys do it a little bit differently, and they're it's definitely more of a it's more of the Outlook Outlook plugin for for Gmail. 
That's what right. it looks like. Right. If you said, you said, you know, oh, is there a version of Outlook plugin for for Gmail? You say, yes, here it is. Um, it's not bad priced. I mean, starting at, uh, say, starting at $15 per user per year, right? Oh, per month. Okay. So a little on the high side. Yeah. Um, it's a little high for something that Salesforce gives you for Outlook. That's kind of true. I mean, well, why we, doesn't what, Salesforce just do this? Well, because really? what you're what you're spending for Outlook and what you're spending for Gmail, you're spending like three dollars for Gmail, and you're spending you know hundred dollars for Outlook a month. Yeah, Outlook's expensive. I get it. Yeah, but still. No, this is this is one of the ones, and the one that you're about to mention as our number one. These are the one, the two that if 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 MB came to me and said, "What two apps should I buy off the App Exchange and make into Salesforce and just." Click my finger and make it part of Salesforce. The one you're about to mention, and this one, it's like just do it tomorrow. Yep. Build it, and I just don't want put it in the product, put it as a check mark under enterprise, and we're done. So leading us up to the number one app number ever. One app. We have never spoken about this app yeah, before. All right, Conga Composer, here they come. Uh, sixth year in the App Exchange top ten. Bam, it's pretty good. I'm looking at their reviews. They have 357 reviews, and their rating is a 4.9 out of 5. That's a lot. It's like a lot of reviews and a really high rating. Um, this what what can we say that we haven't already said about Conga? Um, you know, you can very easily create, deliver documents out of data that's just sitting there inside of Salesforce. Um, great for proposals. Great for um, you know, sending out email templates, even um, great for sending out. We just wrote up the the case study that we mentioned last week for sending out status reports on things. I mean, just anything you can think of that you want to create a document and the data is sitting inside of Salesforce and you don't want people copying and pasting into Word documents or PowerPoints, use Conga. Yeah. If you want to do really complicated reporting even for like business intelligence, you can use Conga to get it into Excel in interesting ways. So many uses, great support. I mean, you can call up their support line at any time and just be like, I'm stuck. And they'll sit there, hop on a go to meeting and build the thing with you. Yep. They're fantastic. The product's fantastic. I can't really say much more about it. Um, and it just keeps getting better, right? With queries and the templates and all the things that they have. They now have other products, you know, like that you can do um, not only just mail merge, but you can have things running off of workflows and delivering um, in that way. So uh, just a really nice product. It This is not native, though. No. Nope. For those who are, like, you know, in the enterprise and concerned about, you know, where your data is going. It is taking your data, throwing it over somewhere else to create this document. Right. So just know that. Um, but a really, really nice application nonetheless um, can create some really, really great stuff out of it. They they say proposals, quotes, account plans, contracts, and more. So, yeah. I mean, really any document you can think of. Yep. We do a lot of We do tons sheets. of stuff with it. We use it, for, we use it for our opportunities. We use it for our project management um, it is it is a very 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 good app. It is also extremely well documented. It's not easy, so I will say it's not like no. There's a lot of codes to it. There's a, well, there's a lot creating of just, a lot of like formula fields with little like you codes. To, you have to know your way around Salesforce to get it to work too. You have to understand IDs and report IDs and codes and buttons and pages and there's all sorts but of it stuff is that, very well documented very well documented. extremely well if documented. you're willing to read the 50 page document or if you're willing to go through it you know page by page and be like i need to do this you can go through their documentation i guarantee you can figure it out right and if you can't you can call them and they'll figure it out with right. you right. they really will that's why they're so great because um you know you're paying for this product and you're getting you're getting what i consider very very high class support yeah for something i think they started like 12 dollars a user or something yeah. um what's also nice about them is uh it's not org basis it's user basis which is nice because sometimes you only need so many users to do this function right. so you don't have to give it to everybody you sign them a license and they can click the buttons and they click the buttons um and it is i i swear i just wish i wish what i mean not that i wish because i love the people at congress i wouldn't want them to you know, oh, they can be bought for a nice chunk. Of I just feel like this is something that I mean, even every again, as we as I set up a new org the other day, and I went in and I removed that mail merge button. Yep. I just thought, why even have this button sitting there? Like, 
this needs to be replaced. It needs to go. Bye bye. I can't um, remember the last time I set up one of those mail merge processes. I don't. I don't. I don't. I have. I just can't remember the last time I've done it. It's it's so it limiting to what version of 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 what Office you can use that it just doesn't work. And browser. Yeah, it's it only worked in IE. And then it's like uh, Office 2007. I have no idea at this point. So at this like, point, they should just get rid. It was in one of my blog posts that I wrote about yeah. like. Need some love? Something that needs love or needs to be killed. Yeah, I don't think it needs love. Love me or kill me. <laughs> that should have been the pop. <laughs> All right. Well, we are not going to make a cloud focus app pick of the week. We just made some picks. We just made didn't 10. We? I don't, th- I think though, although this is a little bit whatever, I think each one of these we had picked before. Maybe not affiliations. Mm. Maybe not opportunity split. I think you've picked before. Donation split. Donation split. Sorry. Opportunity split is a different thing. I've definitely picked, I think, all of those before. All right. So we're not going to do that. No, but we are going to say that uh, Dreamforce is coming up, and we have another blog on the blog.arcusync.com about Dreamforce. This one's entitled "The Top Ten Reasons to Go to Dreamforce." Yep, I feel like we're the only person on the planet who writes this blog post. I don't think so <laughs> at all. But we've been writing it um, for many years. We have for more than other people have been writing it. But whatever, we're all about the love. So. Um, but I do want to say we have our booth number we can actually talk about now. Oh, what's our booth? So our, so now there is, uh, there's two expo centers. No one's going to remember this booth well, number. Well, we're going to say it every that's single time. Big, that's a long number to well, remember. Well, well, it's not that long. <laughs> that's, that's that's five characters. Well, first of all, there's two two expo centers. There's a north right. and a west, I think. I assume we're in north because the booth number starts with an S. So there you go. Now you don't have to remember the Bingo. other. Bingo. All right. And then the number is 1328. All right. 1328. 1328. Oh, man. 1328. Not in 1328. Or go in anywhere search for Arcus. Yeah, you'll find I've it. seen, and I don't think I can talk about it, but I've seen some of the mobile applications that they're going to put out for Dreamforce. Yeah. For the sponsors. They showed us look some of good. them. They look good. And there's going to be lots of ability to find people Geolocate. and and like follow them. Oh. So there's going to be some interesting connections between I don't want people following me around. the company. Oh, all right. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting. Um, remember also, we'll talk about this next week. We have all sorts of stuff. We're going to be there. But we will be doing, as we're, as we're going to talk about, and I think I've even scheduled us now. Yeah, we're you, gonna, you threw it on the calendar. Yeah. Um, we're going to be doing I think our, you cut it close with the time. Well, it's just going to be after. But basically, we're going to – I just want to get our spot. Oh, okay. So we're going to do two live podcasts in the community center um, at Dreamforce, and we'll have details about that as we go, although we're only – we're really one month away. Yeah, it's we're crazy. one month. Um, it's crazy. So we're going to do two, and we're going to do them right after the keynotes. So oh, half an hour or an hour after the keynotes, we're going to do our live sessions. And we are – because we're ordering them very soon, we're going to be doing giveaways and trivia questions. And so we're going to do a little bit of chitter-chatter like we always do, but then we're going to turn it open and ask people stuff and give away swag, um, mm-hmm. including the return of one of our favorite swag items, which I designed the other day. Um, so we'll be doing that. Um, so that's it. We'll be back next week with another episode of Cloud Focus Weekly, of course. Until then, Jake and Justin saying, enjoy those cloudy days. Mm-hmm.